Welcome back, Cardboard Warriors. Hope everybody's doing awesome out there today. So uh, last night was Friday Night Magic, and I went and did a draft at one of my local game stores, and I wanted to go over how it went and what I pulled and everything. My girlfriend also played, so I ended up, uh, my pack one, pick one was this guy here, the Rim Careless uh, Stalwart Slayer, three drop, two, three, Flying Haste, um, which is decent, pretty decent, just as it is. But if a spell would deal damage to you or another permanent you control, prevent that damage. If a spell would deal damage to an opponent or a permanent an opponent controls, it deals that much damage plus one instead. So this thing in red is just broken. So <laughs> great card. Uh, so I, you know, I saw that pack one, pick one. I was like, well, I guess I'm going red and white. Uh, I almost changed direction halfway through because, as you can see here, I got uh, past a Tol Tovalar in the uh, second pack. Uh, this was second pack, uh, pick two, second pack. So I almost switched to red and green because I had pretty much got mostly red cards anyways. So I was almost tempted to switch to red and green. I did pull some green cards, but I ended up deciding to go red and white because then later on I got a... Got the Angel Fire Ignition passed to me, and I also got uh, the Sunrise Cavalier passed to me. And that, this one pretty much, uh, I got this in the second pack. Uh, I was like, well, I think I better stick with red and white after that. So, anyways, here's the deck. The uh, the Rim Careless, the Angel Fire Ignition, uh, Reckless Storm Seeker, uh, Spell Room Painter, Sacred Fire, which is just great, great card. Um, the Sunrise Cavalier was just an incredible card. Uh, I got two of the Lunark Veterans. I love these guys. A one drop, one, one that, uh, whenever another creature comes onto the battlefield under your control, you gain a life. But with the Disturb, after it dies, you get to recast it as a flying one, one that whenever a creature leaves the battlefield, you gain a life. So, uh, just an, just so much value on a one drop on this card. I, I'm kind of surprised they made it a common and not a rare. Uh, it's really, really good card. Um, and then the Voldaren Stingers. Got two of them. This card really, really did awesome for me. I pulled two of them in my uh, pre-release pack last weekend for the pre-release event. And uh, it just did awesome for me. So I grabbed a couple more because uh, the plus two and first strike when it's attacking on a one drop, one, one just so good uh i have won games with just this guy pumping it up a couple times because you can pump it as many times as you want <laughs> so <laughs> doesn't say it can only be used once a turn so yeah great card there uh the falcon wrath perforator uh another good card uh could have been better if it was a 2-2 but it's basically a new scorch spitter but it's two drop two one but whenever it attacks, it deals one damage to defending players. So even if you know it's going to get blocked and die, at least you're getting one point damage through. Uh, I got a Festival Crasher. Uh, this one did awesome for me as well at the pre-release. Plus, it's really cool artwork on it. <laughs> Crazy little devil. Um, yeah, it's another great card that whenever you cast an instant or sorcery, it becomes a 3-3 three, three for 2. Uh, and you can do that multiple times as well. And I got a couple of raised the effigies to use with it. So uh, if you throw this on it, you end up with a 5-5 five, five all of a sudden. So I <laughs> can't argue with that. Plus, uh, I wanted to get a couple of these because of the destroy target artifact because of uh, the last card in here. Um, the bear. The stuffed bear. Uh, we'll get to that. <laughs> so the brimstone vandal. Uh, this guy's really good. 3-drop, two, 2-3 three with menace. And... Whenever it becomes day or night, it deals one damage to each opponent. So that's a really, really uh, usable card in this format and sealed or draft for this set. Uh, the Lambo Harrier I pulled just because uh, the target creature can't block this turn. Two drop, two, two, so it's not bad. And it's a wolf if you got anything that pumps up the wolves. But um, you can, you know, if you got eight mana, you can make two creatures not block that turn every turn. Um, so. I got this just to hopefully get that last point of damage through. I never, I got him out like one time and he got killed right away. So I never actually got to use it. So I don't know how effective it is. He's just a big target. Um, I got a couple of the, or I got the Homestead Courage. I got a couple of them, but I only put one in here. Uh, one to add a 1-1 one, one counter and Vigilance until end of turn. And it's got Flashback for one. A lot of value on that card. Candle Trap, because uh, I didn't get a lot of removal, so this was, I was using this as removal, so it's a good card, works good. 
Uh, I got to burn the accursed. This one I actually ended up using quite a few times, which is surprising for a five drop, but it deals five damage to the target creature and then two damage to the controller, and it exiles the creature if it dies. So, uh, really good to take out some of those bigger werewolf threats in this set. Uh, I got the Harvest Tide Infiltrator, uh, Sun Gold Barrage. Um, this one wasn't very useful, to be honest, because a lot of the bigger creatures still don't have a lot of toughness on them. So, I got to use it a couple times. It helped out, but. Not too much. Uh, the Stuffed Bear. I think if it was like three toughness, it would probably be a lot better. Uh, the Stuffed Bear. <laughs> Dub Bear. He's awesome. Uh, for sealed or draft, he's really, really powerful. Uh, I know it sucks that you're tying up two mana or possibly four mana. But um, for a 4-4, four, four, it's, it's really good value. You can get it out on the second turn. You can use it on the third turn. Really good value. Um, a really good big blocker can, when you're going kind of aggro and everything kind of smaller helps you take care of some of the bigger threats uh some of the cards i pulled that i didn't put in the set were the valderan ambusher just because i didn't have a lot of vampires so it doesn't do a whole lot i think this one will probably be worth a lot more in the next set when the next set comes out with more vampires in it uh flame channeler um I didn't have, I only had the one damage spell, so I was like, I'm not going to be able to transform him a lot. So he's basically just a vanilla 2-drop two 2-2. Two two two. There's the other Homestead Courage. I did get an Immolation, decided not to go with it because I had the Festival Crasher, and it wasn't an instant or sorcery. Um, Blessed Defiance, I, I almost went with this one, but I just kind of had to cut cards at the end there. I probably should have put it in there. Uh, Harvest Tide Infiltrator, I got two of those. Um, great card, it's just... Uh, it was too, a little too vanilla for everything else that I had in there. Morning Patrol. Uh, again, it's got the Disturb, which is nice, but it gets worse with the Disturb. <laughs> I mean, it's Flying Vigilance, but it's only a 2-1. So, for 4. So, I just I, I just decided, yeah, it was just one that I didn't feel was as strong as some of the other cards. So, I left it out. wasn't as aggressive. So, uh, Gavany Silversmith. Um, just... Too expensive. Uh, everything was three drop or smaller, so I <laughs> went a little more aggro. Uh, and then the Unruly Mob. Um, decent card, but two for a 1-1 one, one that you might get a counter out of it. And, um, only if your stuff dies, which is no no fun. And then the Clarion Cathars. Um, again, four drop. It's a 3-3 three, three that creates a 1-1 one, one token, but it just felt kind of expensive for everything else. Same with the Mounted Dread Knight. Uh, I had used this in the pre-release, and he wasn't as effective as I was hoping he'd be. Plus, it, it, I didn't get him out very much because of the expensive casting cost. I try and finish games as quick as I can. All right, so the cards I didn't stack. Uh, Tovalar, Dire Overlord. I got a Haunted Ridge. I just rare drafted that. It actually went around the table once and came back to me. Because I, I almost pulled it the first time just to rare draft it. But there was another card in there. I forget what it was. That was that was much better for the deck. So I was like, I'll oh, hope it comes back around. And sure enough, it came back around. I was stunned. Um, uh, Behemoth, Timberland Guide, Howl of the Hunt, and Bramble Armor. Those were a couple I grabbed when I was thinking about maybe going green. And then some basic lands. So... What I ended up happening, I ended up playing my girlfriend in the first round, and uh, my first hand, I ended up getting uh, five lands and two cards that I couldn't even cast anytime soon. They were both like three drops, and uh, I was like, well, you know, I'll, I'll give her a fighting chance. It's my girlfriend. You got to be nice, you know? So uh, I kept that stupid hand, and uh, needless to say, she beat the hell out of me that game. She went, she went black, red, and actually drew some good stuff. Um, she just, you know, she's still new, so she's having trouble with the timing and playing properly with the stuff and whatnot. Uh, so she didn't do very well in the tournament. Um, there were six players. She came in fifth, uh, but I ended up, uh, losing to her in the first round two to one because she won that first game because I got that stupid hand. And then, uh, I won the second game and then the third game just kind of was, it was kind of a weird stalemate type situation, and we ran out of time because uh, she's still kind of slow being a new player. So we ran out of time and uh, went to went to turns. So I just gave it to her two one. Um, she had me a lot less life. She was doing pretty good. I think she would have won the game anyways. Um, she just she ran the she ran a bunch of the uh, oh this guy. 
She had the Jadar and uh, got him out second turn and was just popping out those zombie tokens and I didn't really have any removal that game for some reason. Um, oh, the, the hand I kept with five lands in it, the, my first four draws were all lands. So I ended up with nine lands and two cards. <laughs> so, yeah, it was, uh, it was terrible. But uh, the second round, I ended up winning 2-1, and then the third round, I won 2-0. So I ended up coming in second. So I got four packs. Um, they were out of promo packs for some reason at the LGS. They're probably selling them online, which is shady. But anyway, I don't know that for sure. I'm just saying that's probably what a lot of stores are doing, which is shady. I don't like it. Those promo packs are supposed to be rewards for players, not rewards for extra money for the... Uh, um, you know, store. It's, uh, yeah, for the players. All right, but anyway, they got four packs. Let's open them, see if I get anything good, and it's a, it's a good set. It's fun to play. Uh, so we got a foil, basic land, and a burn down the house. <laughs> this one, uh, this one really messed me up. I ended up losing a game because of this one in, uh, the, uh, pre-release. Ooh, a Delver of Secrets. Great uncommon. There you go. Arcane Fusion, Chrome Grasp, and some comments. All right. So that burned down the house. That one, uh, that one's gonna be really fun in my, oh, what is that little white flyer dude's deck? Oh, a foil rare in this one. A Briar Bridge Tracker, nice. And a Croaking Counterpart, the easiest rare to get of all of them, I think. <laughs> Strangler, Dance, Revelry, okay. Um, Oh god, I can't think of it. <laughs> the little flyer that's uh whenever it takes damage it, it adds plus one plus one counters instead. Yeah, that guy. Uh that'll be fun in that deck. A curse of silence. Alright. Um curse of silence, pretty decent. It's kinda like a white pithing needle almost. Uh but it just slows it down, doesn't eliminate it. Uh Alms, Putrefying Dragon, there we go. Or pure purifying dragon, <laughs> oops. <laughs> and uh ritual of hope. And some more commons. All right, no mythics. Come on, come on. How are running seven in this pack? That'd be awesome. All right, and drum roll, please. The Celestis. Okay. Um, I'm not sure what to think about that card yet. I haven't actually been able to really use it or anything yet. Skull, Pyre, and Skrillex. <laughs> All right, so there we go. Nothing too exciting. I uh, got a full rare, but. No mythics, nothing really, really big, but uh, had fun. Uh, like I said, came in second, so that's always nice. Um, just out of six, we we haven't been getting a lot of people to draft at that particular LGS, uh, but well, we'll see. Um, looks like a fun set, or it is a fun set to play. Uh, it's it's very weird. It's kind of slow. It seems like every single round, uh, at least two two people were going or two. Uh, groups were going to turns um so it was it seems like it's a very slow set i don't know if that's just because it's very evenly matched on the aggro so uh it's hard for somebody to really jump out ahead and win the game quickly or or what but uh it definitely is seems slower than uh most of the sets to play at draft so, I don't know. Let me know your opinions in the comments below what you've experienced with it. Check out the description below. There's a lot of good links to save you money on your purchases, get your cash back on all your purchases. Um, good sales on Amazon right now on a lot of the cards. And uh, yeah, all those links really help me out, and they're free money for you. Uh, everything's legit. I use it all. I wouldn't put anything down there that I don't actually use. So, it's all free money. Uh, and I'm trying to give you guys as much value as you can for watching my videos because I really appreciate you watching them. And I appreciate those like buttons and those comments and the subs, of course. So hopefully we'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you so much and have a great day.